we are. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I look to you. Cry out to you, Father. Jesus, please forgive me, Father, for my sin. Forgive me the ways that I've just been wrapped up in myself, Father God. And I have not loved you or others as I love myself. Father, we pray that you would forgive me, forgive us for our sins through the sacrifice of your son Jesus and his blood, you would not count our sins against us, Lord. And they would be put on your son Jesus. And we pray that you will cleanse us from everything that's not of you. Please fill us with you, your Holy Spirit, so that we would not continue, Lord God, in the path of darkness and continue in the path of, yeah, just loving ourselves, oh God, and selfishness. But Father, we pray that by your Spirit, you'd help us to not only see your truth and understand it, but to take it into our hearts and to live and to walk by it into your path, Father God, of love. Help us today, we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Um, we are now in John 17, starting from verse 20 and ending in verse 23. I'll be reading from the NIV version, but once again, you can follow along in any other version. It's God's word. So uh, we're still in the high priestly prayer of Jesus in John 17 right before he gets arrested. And he had been praying for himself and his disciples, specifically his 12. And then now he begins to pray for those who will believe in, in him through the disciples. So starting from verse 20, we want to ask ourselves, what does this passage tell us about God? What does this passage tell us about God? Jesus is praying, verse 20, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one, as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Give us a minute to reflect on that. What does this passage tell us about, about God?
<clears throat> what does this passage tell us about about God? We see in here, as we've seen, he prays for us. But here he's literally praying for us. He's praying not just for himself, not just for those that he was in contact with that were his disciples, but he is praying right now. It says, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. Who's that? Their, them. That's the disciples. Uh, we know that he tells the disciples to tell everyone about him, all nations. And who are we if we believe in Jesus? We believe in Jesus because of the work of the disciples who spread that message abroad, right? Throughout the Roman Empire, throughout even beyond that to other countries. We know um, some of the 12 disciples, a lot of them, um, preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus beyond into other countries. And the fact that, you know, unless you're a Jew, uh, most of us are Gentiles, we're non-Jew. The fact that we know about Jesus is because of their work, because God worked through them. So what does this tell me about God? He is praying for us, and specifically he's praying for us who believe. And what is he praying for us? He's praying that we be one. <clears throat> that we be united. What a timely word that that is God's heart, that we be one, that we be united. That applies to us now. That applies to us today. That's what, that he's, that's what he's praying for us. And, and how will we be one? He says in verse 23, I, so Jesus, I don't know, Jesus is in us. And then it says, you, Heavenly Father, are in me. So Jesus is in us. And then within Jesus is God the Father. So with, uh, you could think of it, a turducken. <laughs> a turducken is a turkey with a duck inside. And inside the duck, it's chicken. So it's a turducken. <laughs> but, you know, we're not food. But that's what Jesus is praying for us. That we be one. And you know what? Unity, real kind of unity, not just kind of token unity. It, it's not possible without God. It's not possible without God. How can we be one across so many differences? What do we have in common that really matters in, in, at, at the value level? Not just at the DNA level, at the value level, deeper than that, at the spiritual level. As if Jesus is living in us, and then Jesus himself is completely submitted to the Father, and the Father is in him. That's the only way. That's the only way we could be one. So, Jesus is praying for us. And what is he praying for us? He's praying that we be one. And how can we be one without him inside us? That we would be one with him as he is one with the Father. That's, that's the only way. That's what he's praying for us. That's the only way that the world will know. And what does this tell me about God? That God knows that it's the unity of the church. It's the unity of believers that will be a witness to the world. It says, 
then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. It's when the world sees the unity of believers across differences because it's impossible any other way. There's no other way that we could be unified across race, across differences without Jesus. So the way Jesus is one with the Father, if believers are one together like that, loving each other that way, that's what's going to be a witness to the world. And Jesus knows this. So what does this tell me about God? It tells me that he wants us to be unified and he loves the world and he knows that unity is a powerful witness to the world. That's why the, the gospel is not just Jesus dying for us. It's built upon that. Um, unless that happens, we can't be one with Jesus. But the gospel, the good news to the world, the way it looks is when we are one in love. When we are one, the way that we love one another, love Jesus, right? The way that we love God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love our neighbor as ourselves, especially other believers. That, that's what God wants for us. That's the gospel. That's the good news. It cannot be separated from loving God and loving our neighbors. That's the way it looks. Not just Jesus has saved me, but he saved us. And there should be this oneness. I fear in our American theology. In America, we're so individualistic. In, in our American theology, we've made it so much about individuals. But Jesus wants oneness of community of believers of all of us who believe, not just individual. The gospel has not really taken root and really borne fruit unless we see the unity of the church, of those who believe. Wow, so what we're seeing now we're not there yet. We're not there yet. But I know the Heavenly Father answers Jesus' prayers. So this will happen. This will happen. We need to submit ourselves to that. We need to yield ourselves to that. So what does this tell me about people? What does this passage tell me about people? Give us a minute to reflect on that. What does this passage tell us about people? What does this tell me about people? What does this passage tell me about people? That we can, we can be in Him. 
in him and us. And that, wow, verse 22 is amazing. Jesus says, I have given them the glory that you gave me. The glory that Jesus has because he is in us. We have that glory or he's given it to us. But how do we use it? How do we use that glory that he's given us? Believers, there, there is a glory that we can have, that we do have. Do we shine it? Now, what else does this tell me about people? I and them, you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. We have him in us. We have this glory within us so that we could be brought to complete unity. It means we're not there yet, but that the potentiality of God within us makes this possible. For unity to happen. And. But it's a choice. It's a choice that we have. Are we as believers. Are we just mentally acknowledging Jesus. Or are we really taking him in. His values. What he's about in us. Are we shining his glory. Or are we just. Hiding and. Okay, let me not just say anything. Let me not speak up. Let me not testify to who God is and what his values are. Abuse is happening to our bro fellow brothers and sisters that might be different than us. Well, that's not me. Is that oneness? Is that unity? So I'm not talking about some kumbaya sort of unity. We're talking about a unity of oneness. That what happens to others, it's like it happens to me. That's unity. And that oneness, we don't become one and same where we ignore differences. Because we're different. But... Unity is, though many, we are one. That we would be about his values. We, wouldn't, we shouldn't be unified in silence. We shouldn't be unified to ignore injustice. We shouldn't be unified to stand for things that are evil. No, we are unified in Jesus and what he's about. And what was Jesus about? Who did he reach out to? He focused on the Jewish people, but he's constantly breaking barriers. Reaching out to women, reaching out to uh, people, Samaritans, people of different ethnic, different creeds, people with different bodily abilities, He's reaching out to. He's even reaching out to and commending the Roman centurion who were the oppressors. But he saw faith in them. Mm, we have a lot to learn. It's not just unity. Unity in what? Unity in Jesus and what he's about. What does this tell me about people? We resist that. We resist that. It is not natural within us, within our flesh, to unite with those different from us. To love those that are different than us. Jesus knew this would be difficult. Isn't it interesting? Jesus could have prayed for anything, anything for us as believers. But he prayed that we would be one, that we would be united. He knew this would be so difficult for us. So we have to choose into this. We have to choose into the value and the spirit is calling within us to see each one of us made in the image of God and especially believers to say, you have the spirit. You are my brother. You are my sister. You're one with me. I'm one with you. Your struggle is my struggle. So if you're hurting, I'm not going to say, what about my hurt? I'm going to say, I'm going to come alongside of you. And, and 
in that they're also going to show up for us. But we're going to love anyways. Right? Jesus loved his disciples anyways, even when they were they betrayed him within like a couple hours. He still loved him then. That, that's the Jesus in us. That that loves and takes that initiative even before we feel feel love. We still love. That's Jesus' love that's in us. Oh, church, church, church. Let's join in the prayer of Jesus. Let's be the answers to the prayer of Jesus and be surrendering to him and not resist him, not resist the call of the Spirit and what, he, what he's doing right now, I believe, even prophetically. Maybe these things need to happen, terrible as they may be, so that the church would wake up and be one. So we don't turn our eye and our, our back on the suffering of our brothers and sisters. Certainly it's not just race, but it's specifically, it's, it's a world problem, but man, America's got a problem with it. So we got to deal with that. We got to deal with that. And then did you know what it says? And then when we as a church are united like this, it says, then the world will know that you, Heavenly Father, sent me, Jesus, and have loved them, the world, as you have loved me, Jesus. So, what does this tell me about people? People, when they see unity, there is something about that, and that helps people to see, oh, Jesus is true. Isn't that crazy? We, we could talk about Jesus till we're blue in the face, and that's good. We should, we should do that. People could come to Jesus for sure, but there's something about the world. When the world sees that we are one across differences, then they say there is something supernatural about those people. Maybe Jesus is true. Maybe Jesus is who he says he is. I see Jesus in these people. And these people have something that the world does not have. They have unity. Oh, church. Oh, church. Oh, church, we're in a moment right now. Let's respond. Ooh, let us respond. So the third question is, how do we obey this word? How do we obey this word? Just take a minute to respond. Jesus. Jesus. How do you want us to obey this word today? Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Ooh. Wow, just so challenged this morning. <sighs> How does God want me to obey this word? Ooh. Since God challenged me to fight for unity, to not give up, to push for oneness, to push for unity, not a shallow unity but in the values of Jesus, that we would all be one in the values of Jesus. So that means I got to continue having those hard conversations. I can't just have conversations with people that are just like me. I got to have conversations with other brothers and sisters who say they believe in the name of Jesus and call out 
God in them, call out the image of God in them, call out the values of Jesus in them. And if they've forgotten to speak the words of Jesus, to, to embody Jesus' love towards them and say, you're, you're more than this. We are more than this. Ooh, that's a real challenge for me. That's a real challenge. So, you know, the world, they could choose out. They could choose out. If they're not going to believe in Jesus, how are they going to engage? It's impossible. It's exhausting. But if we have the Spirit, if we say we have the Spirit of God, we must fight for unity. We must speak up. Not peacekeepers keeping the status quo, but peacemakers making peace in Jesus. There would be reconciliation. There would be repentance. Not just pretending things are okay, but say, I'm sorry when things are wrong. And we'd be able to say, I forgive you that you have wronged me. And we would be reconciled and have that kind of unity. Or else it's a false unity. Um, yeah, that's a real, real challenge. So, believer, if, if you're listening to this, we don't have the option to just check out. Oh, we, we should rest one one day out of out of six. For the rest of the rest of the week, we need to be about the work. We need to be about the work. And and I dare say that. If Jesus is within us, within us, we don't ever take a break from Jesus, right? And Jesus says, even we break the Sabbath if it means for the healing of others. So, my goodness, we need him. We need to be at this work. Christians, we do not have the option to check out from what's going on right now. We must fight for unity. We must surrender ourselves towards unity to love one another across differences. Okay. So, the four, fourth question, who can we share this with? Now, who do we need to have conversations with? Who do we need to share this with and encourage them in the fight for unity? Especially amongst believers. <sighs> Let me pray for us. Jesus, we thank you for your heart. We thank you for discipling us. We thank you for showing us the way. Lord, we would rather that you sometimes pray for something else, maybe for our, uh, you know, for our, our benefit. Uh, I mean, this is for our benefit, but just for things that benefit us. But Lord God, you're, you're praying that we be united, that we be one. That's what you're praying for, Lord. So we want to surrender ourselves to that prayer. Do it within us, Jesus. Jesus within us, God within us. We're going to believe you that you've given us your glory. So that, Father God, we be united. So that the world will know. So use us. Show us, Father God, where we can stand, where we could speak, where we could act where we could fight for unity, to be one in you and your values, to love you with all of our beings and to love one another as we love ourselves. Help us, oh God. Help us, please, Jesus. And help the world see not a divided church, but a church that is one. And Father God, for thus, those of us who are still asleep, wake us up, Lord. And for those of us, Father God, where we are wrong, where we are in the wrong, where we are not loving as we ought, we are not in the values of you as we ought, wake us up. Either convert us to you, or Father God, remove us and reveal those who are not of your church, who simply claim your name, but do not have you living in them. So convert us, Father God, call upon your name, or remove us, Lord God, if we're not about what you're about. Help us, Lord God. Who help us, Lord God, to be one as you are one. And let the world know 
that you do love us and you sent us to be one with you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you all.